Belfast and we are in Malmö, Sweden, right now at the central station. And we're going to see some bicycle culture and some bicycle infrastructure and meet a lot of fun people. And I'm going to come along and I have just hit my 22nd bike share in the world. I'm going to be riding a Volvo on my bike, thank you very much. It's a housing project and we call it the, uh, the bicycle house basically. So we have uh, seven floors, street level there is the bike hotel, which are 31 loft apartments, hotel lofts, where you have your enter from the street, you can park your bike outside or carry it inside. And on the rest of the floors there is rental apartments. and. Uh, it's all for people who want to live and have a fantastic life without owning their own car. You guys are building, everything's wide enough for the biggest cargo bikes, is that correct? Is that, yes, so you yes, can own exactly. one, you can have deliveries? Yeah, exactly. And we're gonna have some, like a little bike pool as well, so that you have cargo bikes in the house and also specially built bikes, so that if you wanna drive your kids in the cargo bike. It's just slightly wider so that you can, without a problem, get into the elevator with a bike or a cargo bike. And it's also, you, you have uh, openings to uh, facing both directions, so you never have to turn your bike in the elevator. So you're gonna have this free view all the time that nobody's gonna build there because it's a skate park yeah. and nobody can see into your apartment. So you have these regulations that you have, have to have a certain amount of parking. And since we said we didn't want to have any parking, um, then the city said, it sounds great, but you're going to have to put that money into making it work without the parking. We're putting the money into the dimensions that works for the cargo bikes and so on and for the bike pool. And also I wanted to be a bit, little bit wider like this so that you're gonna feel like when you enter the building and get up it kind of lifts you feel that there's more space we work with the contrast and we also like the circular windows and the openings because it's a little bit of playing with the wheels of the bike as well yeah. and we get all these uh, people emailing us and saying they're interested in renting an apartment uh, but so far we haven't started signing the contracts and deciding who to live here and stuff like that but we're getting a lot of good response and people are very curious about it. We are at the uh, Bike and Ride, Malmö Central Station. There are two areas, one public area that is free and one area that costs about 80 Swedish crowns a month. And you use your uh, public transportation card to get entrance to the, the locked area. It's open 24-7 and there's room for about 1,500 bicycles here. We have um, lower uh, shuffle stands, as we call them, where the, we can park even the wide uh, cargo bikes. And then we have a special entrance for the cargo bikes, which go down by a ramp, so it's easy to cycle down here. My name is Jesper Passeus and I work at the Bicycle Kitchen and the Bicycle Library. It's like an open, free workshop. You can come here, borrow tools and also get knowledge on how to fix a bike. So typically when we're open, people come here uh, with a broken bike. Usually a lot of them think they don't know anything about bicycle mechanics. It usually turns out that they know quite a lot about it or at least are quite used to be handling tools. Then we have a lot of spare parts and we have a lot of tools. And then people come and then they ask, oh, I have a flat tire or I have a slacky chain and then how can I fix it? And then people have to actually fix the bikes themselves. But there's always someone working here that can be a little bit of a help. So we decided to, um, to set up a library where we have cargo bikes and electric bikes and electric cargo bikes. And we uh, get people to be able to borrow it for like two weeks time so they can really try it in their everyday life. Uh, so it's a little bit more than a bike pool because uh, it's more of a pedagogic tool for people that are quite car dependent, for instance. Uh, and then since it's a quite a big investment to buy an electric bike or a cargo bike, uh, they can like manage to be able to try it on and then see if they really use it, even if it's raining or if they're late to kindergarten with their kids or whatever. And then 
Uh, we get everyone to sign questionnaires uh, like before they get to borrow our bike and then we can know if they bought a bike. This is a, a bicycle service station. It's quite new. They just opened it two months ago. And uh, you can fix your bike here. You have some tools you can borrow. You can hang your bicycle up there. And then you can uh, wash your bicycle if you want to. And put some air in your tires. And then you can uh, refill your water bottle if you want to. Malmö's always been a very bicycle friendly city. I grew up here uh, and I don't even have a driver's license. Everyone could bicycle uh, either if they're young or old. And even if you have a well, sportier bike or a cargo bike, this, uh, this town is for everyone. So it's a perfect city for biking because it's, I mean, it's so easy. It's super flat. It's big enough for you. You can get anywhere within 15 minutes. I mean, you can get to the sea, you can get to, the, to your friends, you can get to the bars and restaurants and to work and super easy. We have a lot of shared spaces, uh, which has an impact on the, the speed uh, on both cars and on uh, bicycles. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not that good. There are places where it's better, like Copenhagen and, and uh, Amsterdam for instance, but I think we're just a little bit behind that and also trying to improve all the time. The bicyclists, uh, me included, want uh, more bike lanes. Uh, along the, the busy uh, roads. Like the cars, we want to get to from point A to point B as fast as possible, as safe as possible. I am going to return my bike now.